Okay, and I am going to try and talk through the mic as much as possible just to make sure that we do capture some of the audio on the on the camera here. So again, I'm Trevor Sullivan, Solution Architect with PLA. Um, my background is primarily in PowerShell Automation and System Center Configuration Manager. Um, today we're going to be talking specifically about the PowerShell workflow feature. Uh, just to get a feel for what your guys' experience with PowerShell is, how many of you are currently using PowerShell today on a regular basis? So we've got about four, five, six, seven, okay. Great, and how many of you are wanting to get more into PowerShell? A lot. <laughs> Okay, and then how many, how many of you don't care about PowerShell at all? I've never seen no hands. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, no, that, that's cool. Um, we're going to be talking about workflow. Uh, PowerShell workflow does uh, kind of build upon some of the core PowerShell concepts. Um, so this, this uh, presentation will require at least a little bit of background with PowerShell. Uh, if, you, if I kind of lose you, uh, don't feel bad. Uh, feel free to ping me at any time if you have a question. Um, but again, workflow does kind of build on some other PowerShell concepts, so uh, any prior experience with PowerShell will definitely uh, help. So um, the first thing we kind of want to answer is, well, why are we talking about PowerShell workflow? So what, what are you going to benefit from understanding workflow? And the answer to that is that you can basically, um, you can basically develop start-to-end processes that are, uh, my, my slides are actually kind of backwards here, uh, processes that are long running. So if you've got a process that's going to take a long time to run, uh, if you need the process to be restartable, so you can uh, checkpoint workflows in the middle of them and then resume them uh, from the middle of the script. Uh, if you need things to be parallelizable, so if you're doing, um, you know, very, you know, process intensive uh, operations, maybe you've got a lot of, you know, file copies happening, maybe you've got a lot of, you know, active directory user accounts being created by this, this workflow. If you need to parallelize any of those processes and increase the performance of that script, uh, PowerShell workflow is going to help you. Um, one of the things you'll want to remember is that you can develop workflows very similarly to PowerShell functions. So how many of you actually have experience developing PowerShell functions in PowerShell? Okay, a couple of you. So uh, just a little bit of background. PowerShell functions, you can define them in PowerShell code. You can also write custom PowerShell functions as a C-sharp.net developer uh, in, the, in the PowerShell SDK. And, um, and uh, PowerShell workflows, unfortunately, have a, a limitation that functions don't have, which is that they can't accept user input. So if you try to run certain commands like, you know, get credential or uh, write host or read host or anything that takes user input and interacts with the console is going to uh, be a limitation of PowerShell workflow. Uh, so a couple of requirements that uh, PowerShell Workflow has is you're going to need PowerShell version 3.0 or later. Uh, PowerShell Workflow was introduced with Windows 8 and PowerShell version 3.0. So if you're running PowerShell version 2.0, um, you'll need to uh, make sure you upgrade your operating or your uh, Windows Management Framework Core or PowerShell to a newer version. Um, you also need to make sure that you enable PowerShell remoting. Uh, PowerShell remoting isn't, isn't a requirement to use PowerShell workflow, but when you start to get to the point of deploying workflows out to your endpoints, uh, you're going to want to make sure that PowerShell remoting is enabled, otherwise that will not work. Uh, furthermore, there's a, if, you, if you're familiar with PowerShell remoting, you may be familiar with the concept of PS session configurations. And PS session configurations are uh, basically the, these uh, settings, um, these configuration settings that are in PowerShell, and it basically allows uh, you to connect to different endpoints within PowerShell. And each of those endpoints can have different permissions assigned to them. For example, you could create an endpoint that only help desk users could connect to and only allows you to run you know, five or ten different very specific commands. Um, the default session configurations in PowerShell are open to administrators. So as long as you're a member of the local administrators group on one of those endpoints, uh, you'll be able to uh, invoke workflows. Uh, you'll be able to use PowerShell remoting uh, without workflow, um, and so on. 
So at the bottom here, we just have a really quick uh, history of PowerShell, uh, Windows XP, uh, PowerShell version 1 and 2 were available. On Windows 7, you got PowerShell version 2 out of the box, so if you are currently running Windows 7 today, you're most likely on PowerShell version 2 unless you've gone through the specific effort of upgrading the Windows Management Framework Core package on your, on your Windows 7 machine. Uh, when Windows 8 came out, Microsoft did provide a version 3 upgrade to Windows 7 for PowerShell. Uh, but thankfully, they've actually upgraded it to version 4 as well. So if you're still on Windows 7, uh, make sure that you deploy uh, PowerShell 4.0 uh, to your environment to make sure that you can take advantage of all the latest features in the language. Uh, Windows 8 came out in 2012, uh, roughly October, I believe. Uh, PowerShell version 3 was included out of the box with Windows 8. And uh, unfortunately, there's no upgrade available for Windows 8. Uh, Microsoft really seems to want to push people to Windows 8.1. So make sure that if you uh, want to run the latest and greatest, you're running PowerShell uh, version uh, 4.0 on Windows 8.1. Any questions on any of that? So um, how, how do we go about creating workflows? Well, there, there's really two approaches to creating PowerShell workflows. Uh, one is to use uh, XAML, or Extensible Application Markup Language. Uh, XAML is basically an extension of XML, and who here likes writing XML? Uh, you gonna raise your hand? Yeah, I've, I've done, done okay. plenty of XAML-based stuff. Okay, all right, well, fair, fair enough. We have one develop quasi-developer in the house, at least. Uh, so we've got one guy out of about 30 who likes uh, developing XAML. Um, for the rest of us, who are a little bit more sane, um, we'll use PowerShell, uh, so we can actually write PowerShell workflows in PowerShell syntax. And the most basic format of a PowerShell workflow is kind of what's in that box right there. There's a keyword called workflow, very similar to the function keyword. So it, you, can, you can define functions and you can define workflows. And the cool thing about workflows is that when you define a PowerShell workflow, you actually get a lot of automatic functionality, such as the ability to run that, that PowerShell workflow as a PowerShell background job. And secondly, you can automatically use the PS computer name parameter on that workflow without having to define it yourself to invoke that workflow on remote computers. And that, that leverages the uh, WSMAN remoting protocol that uh, Win WinRM offers on the Microsoft platform. So when you write a PowerShell workflow, you are not writing a function. You're writing a workflow. And there, there is a very dis uh, large distinction between functions and workflows. Uh, PowerShell workflows are made up of activities, not command lists. So when you're writing commands inside of a PowerShell workflow, you're actually calling activities. And uh, the PowerShell workflow engine builds on top of the uh, Microsoft.NET Windows Workflow Foundation, or WWF, uh, not the wrestling thing. Um, so so these, these commands that you're calling inside of a workflow are actually called workflow activities, which is really a .NET framework concept. Now, uh, Microsoft, thankfully, automatically wraps most commands into activities, so you don't really have to worry about um, being able to call commands inside of a workflow. However, you will come to notice as you work with workflow that there are differences in which parameters are available on some commands in a workflow compared to uh, just in a function or just calling a command independently in PowerShell. There are, again, some commandlets that are specifically excluded. For example, write host. Uh, read host, uh, get credential, things that, that take user input, um, you, you will have some limitations on that. Um, thankfully though, because we're building on top of PowerShell remoting using PowerShell workflow, uh, we can pass in credentials, so, so you're not restricted from passing in credentials, you just can't call get credential from within a PowerShell workflow. <coughs> now if you do need to run traditional PowerShell commands without calling the activity version of that command, you can use a, a uh, activity that's built into PowerShell called inline script. So when you call inline script, you can put inside of that block of code um, traditional PowerShell commands, and they'll, they'll operate just like you expect. Now, there, there's a few, um, command, or a few parameters on the inline script activity that allow you to customize how that behavior works. 
Uh, one thing that I would point out is that when you use inline script, it does sit on top of the PowerShell remoting engine. So again, make sure that you're enabling PowerShell remoting or WinRM in your environment to make sure that these workflows are fully functional. Uh, compared to Compared to functions, uh, activities uh, cannot use dynamic parameters. So for those of you who develop your own custom functions in PowerShell, you can define a parameter block very similar to um, the workflow version there. So we've got that little param block, and we're specifying input parameters that we want to put into the function. Right? Well, you can create, in, in functions, you can create what's called dynamic parameters. And you can set conditions so that those dynamic parameters show up under certain conditions or do not show up under other conditions. So uh, I don't really have an example for that, but um, you know, there, there's some occasions where you want to use maybe one parameter with another parameter, but not with another parameter. And so those dynamic parameters are not supported in, in activities. Um, activities do have some common parameters that are not available on their command with equivalents. Uh, so for example, if you run the get process command or get service command or any of those core PowerShell commands that are available out of the box, uh, you'll notice that they don't, that they have, you know, standard parameters like get service, you know, as a name parameter, what, what, what's the name of the service that I want to get. But in the activity version, you have some automatic parameters that show up like PS computer name. So, uh, you automatically get this PowerShell remoting ability on the activities, not just at the workflow level. So you could have a workflow that runs on your local computer, but it reaches out to your endpoints and retrieves that information through that PS computer name parameter. So these are some of the automatic parameters that you'll see on a workflow and some of the activities within a PowerShell workflow. As I mentioned earlier, one of the uh, core capabilities that you get with PowerShell Workflow is the ability to invoke a workflow as a PowerShell background job. And PowerShell background jobs are awesome because you can deploy that workflow to X number of computers. It could be 10, it could be 100, or 1,000, or 10,000. And you can basically tell PowerShell, I want you to just kick this off as a background job. And then you can keep tabs on that job over time. So you can run get job to see if uh, that job has finished, or if it's failed, or whatever state it may be in over time. And once that job completes, you can then uh, you know, take some sort of action as a result of that. But it's great because when you use the as job parameter, you uh, are able to run other commands inside your console without blocking user input. So you can just kick off that workflow against a list of computers and uh, keep running other PowerShell commands in your local console. Uh, that, that should actually read a PS computer name, not dash computer name. Uh, so the PS computer name parameter just allows you to take that workflow and deploy it out to your endpoints over the uh, WinRM PowerShell remoting channel. Uh, were, were any of you here like a month or two months ago when I talked about PowerShell remoting? Anybody remember that? I thought I remembered you, yeah. So we've got at least one. So I gave another talk on how to enable PowerShell remoting, how to go through and configure that feature. Um, if you guys are interested, uh, I can make that content available to you. I can give you one of my business cards. You can shoot me an email, and I'd be more than happy to share that information with you. Um, PS Persist, we'll skip over for now. Um, for those of you, again, who are using PowerShell remoting, the PS configuration name, you can specify specifically what configuration you want uh, PowerShell remoting to use if you do have custom configurations. Uh, that's kind of a topic in itself, so we're not going to dive too deep into the uh, creation of custom configurations. Uh, you can also specify a retry count, so if that if uh, a computer is offline and you want uh, PowerShell to retry connecting to that computer, you can specify how many times you want it to retry. Uh, you can specify the interval for retries. So maybe uh, you know you have a situation where servers are rebooting for maintenance on a scheduled cycle, and you know that they're only going to be down for maybe five to ten minutes. You know you can set that retry count maybe to five, set the interval maybe to you know six hundred seconds or something like that, ten minutes, and um, you know hopefully that PowerShell workflow will then kick off on those machines. So that's, again, an, an automatic feature that you get without having to write any additional code, whereas if you were writing functions, you would have to write some additional code to you know, test to see if the computer's pingable, make sure that the WinRM service is up and running, make sure that you can connect to it, and then you know, proceed 
uh, as appropriate. Um, but with PowerShell workflow, that capability is, is just automatic and built in. Uh, again, you can use the PS credential uh, command, uh, sorry, parameter on your workflow automatically when you define a workflow, and that allows you to simply specify an alternate credential if you're not logged into, into the computer with the credential that you're going to use to invoke that workflow remotely. Uh, furthermore, if you have a, a, a workflow that you know should not take a very long time to run and you're concerned about that workflow getting hung up on your endpoints, you can specify the PS elapsed timeout uh, to specify the maximum amount of time that that PowerShell workflow can run. So if it exceeds that uh, timeout, then uh, PowerShell will go ahead and kill that uh, remote session and prevent it from you know, tying up system resources. Any questions on uh, the automatic parameters? I will specify, though, that there are uh, other parameters. This is a partial list. Um, so if you're interested in more information, make sure you go out to TechNet.